switch frame relay. Um, but on, you know, bridging and switching section, you know, the catalyst configuration, what are the core topics? You know, like I, I mentioned those core topics already. What is non-core? Well, spanning tree, you know, advanced MSTP, you know, um, MST, you know, all kinds of advanced features, uh, advanced tuning for filtering of, you know, MAC addresses, you know, DHCP snooping, all those are um, multicast VLAN registration, which is another one, which is kind of a neat feature. You know, basically it lets you bleed multicast between VLANs without going through a layer three interface on a switch. So you can take multicast from VLAN 100 and put it in VLAN 200 without going through a layer three interface. So that's MVR, multicast VLAN register. It's kind of a cool feature. Features like that though, you just, you, you wanna know they're available to you. You wanna know where they're documented. Maybe you labbed it up once and that's it. You don't wanna become, you know, you don't wanna become worried cause like, hey, I, I see multicast VLAN registration and I don't know anything about it. You know, they're not gonna expect, you know, the average person to come into the CCA lab and be an expert with MVR. What they're gonna expect is that the, a good solid engineer has probably heard about it or can at least go to the documentation and find it and then implement a basic config and verify that that basic config works. That's what they're looking for. Okay, another example is uh, you know, .1x authentication. For the RNS CCA lab, should I be an expert at .1x authentication? No. On a scale of one to 10, how familiar would I be? Probably about a four. I wanna do it once or twice. I wanna know what the default configuration is for it what the default parameter, the minimum configuration I need for it. I want to know where it's documented and that's it. I want to move on. Okay, now about a topic like VLANs, trunking, ether channel. Yeah, you want to be experts with those. I mean, you want to make sure there's no sort of trunking config, which there isn't a lot, but there's no sort of ether channel config that they can give you that you can't do. You know, so, you know, just make sure when you're preparing, you're not spending a lot of times and stressing on a lot of odd features that are in the iOS or in the, you know, the, 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 the catalyst uh, switches there. Okay, so for IP routing, pretty straightforward there. I mean, we know what to expect. BGP, you know, once again, focus on the core, and be aware of the advanced features, try to do the feature once or twice, lab it up, know where it's documented, know what it does, move on. Don't become an expert with, you know, BGP DMZ bandwidth or some of this sort of odd feature. Don't worry about it. If you're worried about it for the RNS CCA lab, go look on, like I said, go look on one of the forums, see how many people discuss it. You know, see, how, you know, and see if it's covered in the workbook, you know, and, and if you see DMZ uh, bandwidth for, for BGP, if you see that feature in every, you know, in like 10 of 20 labs in our workbook, yeah, I would say be an expert with it. But if you see it once or twice, you know, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on it. And it comes from a real world perspective, it's just not implemented that much. And if it's, it's given to you in the lab, the, you know, the logic behind it is that they're just gonna see if you can interpret the question, be aware of the feature and implement the feature. All right, the IP services stuff, uh, a lot of this stuff is basic. Don't skip over some of this documentation though. Don't, you know, don't skip over the IP addressing documentation or the access list documentation. Sometimes you'll be surprised at what you can find, you know, in the, like the access list. I'll tell you a really good example is some of the features that you can use for access list. Like say, you know, commonly you do an access, you'll say uh, access list 100 permit TCP any, any equals, you know, EQ 23. Okay, but you know, there's also an option that says any Q, not equal. You know, there's an option that says, and how often do you use that? Not that, not that often. But if you if you look at the documentation, you probably ran across that feature, and then you could probably think in your head, well, how could they use that in the CC lab? It may be some sort of reverse logic, like use to you know filter this traffic off, you know, or like deny telnet through the router, uh, through this interface. Use a one line access list to accomplish this. You know, or you know, something along those lines there, or deny you know, telnet through and permit all other TCP traffic using one ACL entry. Then you just say not equal 23. But a lot of these features you just don't see a lot in the real world, but you'd have picked up on it if you probably looked at the class on demand or you looked through the, the documentation there. There's also a lot of new features that were added to access list in 12.4T, which you don't have in the lab now, but there's a lot of options for matching on a, a lot of the bits that are set in like uh, in, in TCP. 
you know, the established bit, well, the established bit's been there, but I mean, the sin, act, you know, and all, all that, all the three-way handshake, you can match on individual portions of that three-way handshake. Okay, you used to be able to match only on the established flag. Now you can match on a lot of little options there. All right, so for, for, this, for these kind of features, you know, don't skip the basic iOS user interfaces, uh, user interface documentation uh, on the doc CD. I'll tell you a good example. People, you know, people come up and it's, a lot of people know it now. They'll say, how do you put a question mark in iOS? If I want to have a password that says, you know, enable secret Cisco question mark. Well, okay, I'll do control V, then I hit Q, and then it'll, it'll, it'll take the Q as a as in a character rather than, you know, as, as, as opposed to popping up the help. But, you know, what, what if they, you know, I'm, they wouldn't do this to you that, but what if you didn't have a control key on your keyboard? What would you do? Well, if you read the documentation, you just saw there's also another option that's escape Q. The options are escape Q or control V to put in a question mark. You know, I mean, you know, you just want to know where this stuff is documented. You want to have seen it once. You know, all these little iOS features, you know, this stuff is going to be cut and paste from the doc CD. You know, and, and the people who spent all their time nose deep in a lab workbook, in 55 vendors lab workbooks out there, who didn't spend any time in the doc CD, those are the people who are going to get bit by those little questions. Why is that? Because the RNS CCA lab proctors, these proctors know what's out there. They know what questions you're getting in the workbooks. They know what's covered in the material. Guarantee that. Okay, so a lot of times they'll write little questions that just, you know, they know this isn't covered in a workbook. You know, so you just got to make sure that you're familiar with the documentation. You can look this kind of stuff up. All right, so for a lot of these other features, you know, IP accounting, Armon, SNMP, NTP, NAT, there's non-core features. You definitely want, I guess NAT could relate to IP reachability. It can obviously solve a lot of problems for IP reachability. Uh, but NTP, Armon, SNMP, you know, those features you, you really don't want to spend a lot of time on. You want to have an understanding. You want to have implemented them once or twice, and then you want to pretty much move on. One thing I would recommend, though, about SNMP, in your lab, spend some time actually polling your devices or getting traps from your routers. So hook up, you know, hook up a Linux box, hook up a, a, a Mac, you know, a, you know, a Macintosh box, because a Mac is BSD underneath. So it's the same operating system, of course, as you guys know that, that Juniper uses. So there's a lot of networking utilities. You can also get them for Windows too, if you have to use Windows. But you know, just get a little utility that can listen to SNMP traps and do SNMP sets. It help you, you know, especially ones that can support uh, OS. Uh, sorry, that can support SNMP v3. So you know, there's definitely some um, good utilities out there, freeware ones that you can just test your configurations. It's going to definitely improve your understanding of the technology if you actually do it. Another one I do for like in, in the class on demand, I show you how to configure multicast, then test your multicast config using NTP. Cisco now supports the distribution of NTP information through multicast. They've supported it through unicast, which is you specify each device pointing to the server and so forth, and then broadcast, which goes segment by segment. But now they support it via multicast. So you can actually have your multicast, your server stream out the time to a multicast group. Then all the routers you want to pick up on or have learned their time via NTP, what you do is you just go on and configure them as in a multicast NTP client. And then they join the group. It's real simple to do. It's, it's definitely a, a neat feature though. But you know, something like that, what I expect in this ECA lab, yeah, probably not. But you know, if you if you can do multicast and you can get NTP information propagated across your network using multicast, you're pretty good. You're, you know, you're you're definitely uh, ahead of the game for sure. All right. But you know, once again, though, you know, these are just you know side you know portions of the CCA lab, meaning they're non-core. You could fail. You could skip NTP in the CCA lab and still pass. You can't skip. OSPF, you can't skip frame relay, you can't skip Ethernet switching, but you could skip NTP, you could skip system management, you could skip DHCP, you can skip these IP services and features and still pass. Of course, though, you, know, you can't skip all of them, you know, because you, you're going to you know, expect probably 30 points that may relate to your 30 or 40 points that kind of relate to non core features QoS, um, you know, DHCP, you know, different IP services, NTP, Armon. You know, definitely those features there. You know, QS, like I said, I mentioned non-core here. Uh, but you don't spend a lot of time focusing on advanced portions of a topic like QS until you're solid with the basic, you, you understand how QS works. That's what you want to focus on first 
before you delve into a topic like QS. We already talked about multicast. They talked about PAM. We, we talked about